All right, so glad to get the win. Um, you know, get to seven and two. Um, you know, which is which is good, not great, and that's kind of you know where we are. You know, we we really struggle to um, take the next step. The first half was great. I mean, twenty four nothing in the first half. Whatever, six sacks or something at halftime um, was awesome. And unfortunately, you know. Tried to get them up the same way we did for the game, you know, to start the game in the second half, and we didn't do that. And really played a bad second half, lost 14-3. to three. Um, You know, now that's always challenging when the game goes so well at halftime, 24 nothing versus a team that, you know, you know, they don't think of as an SEC team. And, you know, you loosen up, and that's what we did. We didn't tackle as well. They have a very elite player, um, you know, that we contained in the first half and did in the second half. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, it was it was kind of, you know, almost like the Arkansas game reversed where we played, you know, really good on one side and not on the other. And, you know, nine sacks is awesome, three interceptions. Now we didn't play as well as we'd like, but the play counts got lopsided 81 to 55 because we're not making third downs on offense which is obviously an issue. Two of nine um, versus them is, you know, putting our defense back out on the field a lot. So, you know, Matt was courageous, played pretty well. It was good to see two backup receivers and Plumlee and Danis Jackson go over 100 yards and make some plays, um, which was really good to see. And, you know, it's very human nature to let up, you know, the first – Run goes for 70, and it's 24 nothing at half. And um, unfortunately, we gave into that. Got questions? Sit back to the front. Hey, you can stay right there. Jerry obviously only had three carries last week. Second play of the game, he breaks that one open. Just how important was it for him to kind of have early success today? Yeah, that, that was great. And, Probably like you guys thought, you know, we were going to run the ball a lot better um, after that. I thought we were going to run the ball really well coming into the game, just looking at matchups and things. They had played really good statistical defense um, all year long. You know, people had not had a lot of points and yards against them. Um, so I thought we would. And very surprised after that run how our inability to, you know, run the ball. You know, now Matt's part of that because obviously he can't run at all, so you can't run the same type of runs that you normally run, just like his one to Plumlee at the end, he normally would have pulled. Uh, so, but, <clears throat> you know, penalties just really not smooth on offense in the second half. You know, um, not, it, it's hard to be really excited, but I guess we're seven and two, so. You brought up Dennis. Just seemed like he was very well involved in the game plan, and for him to come back after that early drop and have the game he did, just how impressed were you with the way he kind of stuck in there? It was huge. Probably, you know, Plumley, um, and here are probably the stories of the game offensively, but probably even more him because he had, you know, missed a lot of opportunities, you know, in games or practice, and not made, you know, plays that we needed him to make. And so for him to do that today was huge. And um, you know, he had the one in Tennessee, but you know, he was he was wide open. Here he made some competitive plays, you know, which is what we've been waiting on for him to do because um, he's very talented. Just obviously in the second half, they started running the ball a lot more to try and take the pass rush out of the game. How did their adjustment kind of change what you guys were doing defensively? Well, as usual, we were in a lot of three-man rush and spying him. And, um, you know, and there were some long yardage situations. They were in first and 30, first and 20, um, you know, and we gave up some really explosive runs, you know, in those situations, you know, trying to play safe. So um, we got a lot of improvement to do. I thought we wore down in the second half, again, because we're not – staying on the field on offense, the defense is out there too many plays. And you could see that, especially with Chance, look how he was able to make those plays. And the quarterback usually never wears down. So a running quarterback is always an issue in the second half of the game. Like, 
and said in the national championship the year when, you know, Jalen Hurts, Georgia, you know, like everyone else is starting to get tired, but the quarterback hasn't run very much. So, you know, that happened in the game. You know, you're playing all these snaps running around, and the quarterback half of the time, you know, is handing off or just throwing in rhythm. So that can always be an issue late in the game. You've talked all year about wanting to play four complete quarters, wanting to finish games. How does a team start doing that? I don't know. You got the answer? I don't. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> um, I really thought it was going to happen. I felt good about the week of practice. I felt good about our, you know, even though we had all the, we still have all these injuries on offense. I really felt, you know, in the way the game went in the first half, I felt it was going to be that complete game, you know, 48-7 or something. And it, and it was headed that direction. And, you know, we got out of rhythm, got some penalties on offense, you know, and didn't make some plays, a third down drop. And all of a sudden, you know, we're in a game. Sam's up to 10 and a half sacks this year. It's the most for an Ole Miss player in the modern era. Just what has his consistency and presence meant for this defense this season? I think it says what an elite player he is, you know, because we're in a three-man rush. So I don't keep that stat, you know, find out what's the nation leader when you're a three-man rush team, you know, because it's a lot harder. You're getting doubled all the time. So um, maybe there's an analytic on that. But that to me shows how special Sam is. If you set the school record with three regular season games to go and you're a three-man rush, you know, says a lot. We'll take questions up top. Lane, I know it was um, obviously – just recently, so you probably don't know too much, but do you have any info on Sam, if he's banged up or not, and, and how's he doing? Um, well, he went – the one that looked really bad, he went back in. So, um, I, I don't know anything more than that. And, and staying on the defense, A.J. Finley made a couple nice plays today. How have you seen him kind of progress through the whole season, basically, and also in, in practice that uh, – in ways that we kind of maybe haven't seen well, he was hurt early in the year, I think second or third game, and was struggling, I think, with an ankle, and you could tell that out there. So um, he's healthy now and, and playing better. And in general, we're playing better on defense, and our our secondaries, our safeties are playing better and not giving up as many explosive plays. Coach, how do you um, combat that those second halves and, you know, wanting to finish better? Um, you know, maybe human nature to be up, as you mentioned, to, to let off. I guess at this point in the year, I guess, as a coaching staff, how do you just implore to, you know, the kids that, hey, we, we got to finish no matter what the score is? Well, like I said, I mean, we try. Um, I don't think there's a magic potion. You know, I'm not making excuses. If you're fully healthy, you know, it helps because you got more players, you know, like on offense. You know, all those receivers are out there, and then these guys are rotating through, and you got – you know, more energy at the end of games because your play counts are lower versus, you know, playing every snap. So that helps too. And um, when the quarterback can't move very well, remember, think about throughout the season, there's a lot of third downs he's making on his own. Things are broke down. We get beat up front and he scrambles and makes somewhere today. He can't do that. So um, that's not a great third down combination when basically your top three receivers are out and your quarterback can't run anymore. Lane, you you mentioned how uh, you weren't like too excited, but you're you're seven and two. But at the same time, with all the injuries you all have on offense, Matt still threw for over 300 yards. You established a lot on the ground game. Maybe in the second half, you didn't score as many points as you wanted to, but still offensively put up some numbers and yards. What does it kind of say about these guys when you have all these injuries and you're still able to put up numbers like you did? Well, it says we have a very elite quarterback, you know, that is did not practice the entire week. You know, um, until yesterday did a few things. So, you know, that that's not easy to do and still be accurate like he was with the ball. Um, you know, and like I talked to him late in the week. There's a lot of quarterbacks wouldn't play, especially nowadays, you know, with everybody in their ear saying you're already a first round pick. Don't get injured worse. Don't you don't need to play in this game. And that's kind of the age we're in. Most of the kids don't play nowadays. So the fact that that. He didn't even question that. You know, I'm I'm not letting this team down. I'm playing no matter what. Says a lot about him. Are you here with coach? Coach, obviously. Coach. 
Coach, obviously you have a relationship with Coach Freeze. What was your message to him at the end of the game when y'all met at midfield? Well, I don't know him all that well. I've met him a few times. My brother worked here with him. Um, just said good luck and, um, you know, his defense did a great job and his quarterback played really well. So good luck.